الله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى ما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم تلك الرسل فضلنا بعضهم على بعض منهم من كلم الله ورفع بعضهم درجات وآتينا عيسى بن مريم البينات وأيدناه بروح القدس ولو شاء الله ما قتتل الذين من بعدهم من بعد ما جاءتهم البينات ولكن اختلفوا فمنهم من آمن ومنهم من كفر ولو شاء الله ما قتتلوا ولكن الله يفعل ما يريد يا أيها الذين آمنوا أنفقوا مما رزقناكم من قبل أن يأتي يوم لا بيع فيه ولا قلة ولا شفاعة والكافرون هم الظالمون صدق الله العظيم وبلغنا رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله We completed the second juz of Quran yesterday and today inshallah we'll start reading the third juz تلك الرسول فضلنا بعضهم على بعض Those are the messengers, some of whom we have given excellence over some others. So this is a very clear and express ayah of the Quran, which says that some prophets have been given excellence by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over some other prophets. In our times, there is a fitna which say that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and there are hadiths of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has said that do not give preference to one Nabi over the other. Or similarly, the Prophet has said that do not give me preference over Musa or do not say that anyone is superior to some specific prophet. So how do we, and the Quran here is saying clearly that we gave some prophets preference of superiority, excellence over some others. So it is very simple. The words of the Hadith, if you look at them, the Prophet has said do not give preference and the Mufassirin and the Muhaddisin have explained it that looking at the background of the environment that the Prophet ﷺ said it that basically meant that you do not give preference to some Anbiya over others out of your own opinion out of your own thinking without having any proof from the Quran and Sunnah but when there is proof in the Quran and Sunnah for example, this ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning that there's, there's some anbiya that have been given, some rusul who have been given superiority by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself over others. Similarly, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has himself said about himself that I have been given preference or superiority over other anbiya in certain, certain, such and such regard. Then when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying it himself and when the Quran is saying it himself, in light of the Quran and in light of the Sunnah, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet ﷺ himself is giving importance to some anbiya over the others, then that becomes permissible and that's that's the true case. If somebody, the, the, the hadith, the ahadith that tell people not to give importance or make certain anbiya superior to the others, means that people should not go about giving preference to certain anbiya out of their own opinion. Among them, there are ones we have given excellence over some others. Among them, there are ones to whom Allah spoke. Kalam, kalam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had kalam with them, spoke directly with them. We know. We all know who, the, who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about. Sayyidina Musa ala nabina wa ala alayhi salatu wasalam. Wa rafa'a ba'adahum darajat. And he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, raised some of them steps higher in some other respects. So one, one avenue of giving respect to one Nabi is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked to them directly. For example, Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam. And some other prophets were given preference or elevated in levels, in steps by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in some other respect. وَآتَيْنَا عِيسَى بْنَ مَرْيَمَ الْبَيِّنَاتِ And we gave clear signs to Isa ibn Maryam, the son of Maryam. وَأَيَّدْنَاهُ بِرُوحِ الْقُدُسِ And supported him with the Holy Spirit. Ruh al-Qudus refers to Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam. 
and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appointed Jibreel alayhi salam for protection of Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam constantly when he was in a significant and imminent danger from the Bani Israel of being killed. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had appointed Ruh al-Qudus himself to protect Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam from those, uh, from the, from those um, people. وَلَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ مَا قُتَتَلَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَتْهُمُ الْبَيِّنَاتِ وَلَكِنْ اِخْتَلَفُوا فَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ آمَنَ وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ كَفَرْ فَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ آمَنْ وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ كَفَرْ وَلَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ مَا قُتَتَلُوا وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يَفْعَلُ مَا يُرِيدُ Now this part says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will those succeeding these prophets would not have fought among each other the people of the Anbiya that came after those Anbiya or after the Anbiya they would not have fought among each other after they had been given clear signs to the Prophet to the Prophets Sayyidina Musa, Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam but they disagreed among themselves وَلَاكِنْ اِخْتَلَفُوا فَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ آمَنَ وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ كَفَرْ so there were some among them who believed and some who did kufr or disbelieved وَلَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ مَقْتَتَلُوا and if Allah had willed they would not have fought against each other. So there would not have been friction between each other. وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يَفْعَلُ مَا يُرِيدُ But the thing is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to do. So in the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah we had read and we had gone in detail over it that why do some people perform kufr and why do some people bring iman? The ruling is that in reality, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given people the choice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given people the choice. But when somebody puts themselves on the path of kufr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses kufr for them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destines kufr for them. For example, one example my husband Shaykh used to give is that for example, in our cell phones, we have an operating system. It is our choice. We can use that operating system to do, to look at some good stuff. And it is our choice that we can use that operating system to look at some bad stuff, do evil things with it. The person who has made the operating system cannot be held responsible for something bad that we do of our own choice. So, taqdeer in terms of Iman and Kufr is like that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made a system. Another example, Hakim al-Ummat Mawlana Shawr Sahib Thaymi has written in his tafsir that for example, there is one strong person, a pahalwan, a strong person. He is sitting by a stone and that stone is really heavy. Normal people can't lift it. But that, that strong person has made a rule. He said, that if you come, if somebody wants to try and lift that stone, I will help them. Automatically, I will help them. If they want to lift that stone, I will help them. This is my rule. This is my principle. So if somebody comes and tries to lift that stone and the Pahelwan, the strong person, helps them lift it, it is in reality the decision of that weak person who was not able to lift that stone but they chose to lift it knowing fully well that when we will try that strong person will actually help us so that is their, their principle that is their rule that, that they do it so this is this is the meaning of when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does what he intends Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has willed kufr for those people who have willed kufr for themselves who have wanted to choose the path of kufr and disbelief for themselves, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has built it for them. This is the general principle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the people who want to choose Hidayah, who want to choose Iman, who want to follow the prophets of their time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses goodness and belief for them. One more ayah today, inshallah. And then tomorrow, inshallah, we'll do ayat al-kursi. So the, uh, this ayah, Ya ayu al-ladhina amanu anfiqu min ma razaqnaakum min qabli an yaatiya yawmul la bay'un fihi wa la qullatu wa la shafa'a wal kafiruna humul zalimun. O you who believe, Ya Yu Ladina Amanu. Anfiku, spend. Mimma razaknakum, whatever we've given you. 
من قبل قبل is before من قبل before أن يأتي يوم يوم is day أن يأتي it comes when before it comes a day there comes a day يوم لا بيع فيه ولا خلة ولا شفاعة Allah SWT is saying that there will come a day when there will be these three things they will no longer exist these three things exist in this world but they will not exist on that day لا بيع فيه no trading ولا خلة Khullah, we went over the meaning of this in Juma Khutbah. Khullah, Khullat, Khalil, friendship. So, la bay'un fi, no trading. Wala khullah, no friendship. Wala shafa'ah, and no intercession. Nobody will be able to recommend someone else or intercede for someone else. Except by the, except by the um, permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is going to be explained in Ayatul Kursi, man dhal ladhi yashfa'u indahu illa bi idni. Allah SWT is saying that shafa'at, there will be no shafa'at except by permission of Allah SWT, illa bi idni. But anyway, in this ayah, la bay'un fihi wa la khullatu wa la shafa'ah wa al kafiruna humu al-dhalimun. And on that day you'll find out that at a real loss, the disbelievers will be, the kafirun will be at a real loss. They are the people who are unjust and they are the, they are the ones who are going to be at a real loss that day. So this ayah compares this word to the hereafter. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is saying that those of you who have believed this word is darul amal, that word is darul jaza, or darul. Uh, this that word is the uh, place where you get get your rewards. You'll you'll earn here, you'll do deeds here, and you'll get the reward there. In reality, so do spend in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then spend in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what? Something that in the first place is given to you by us. Mimma razaqnaakum. We have given it to you. So spend in, in, in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do it before that day comes. This is Darul Amal. This is the place of doing things. Do it today and then you will reap the rewards on the day where there will be no trading, there will be no friendship, there will be no intercession that can safeguard you from any loss of that day. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us eternally from all loss here and the hereafter and make us among the people who understand and fully follow the Quran. Amin. Amin. Amin.